Hey guys and welcome back to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video we're going to take a look at using basic shapes in Adobe Illustrator. So let's jump straight in and have a look at how we use them now. So we're in Adobe Illustrator now and we have our template file open. Now before we start you can also download this template file from the link in the description and you can follow on from home. So to begin with we're just going to create some simple shapes here using the basic shape tools we have in Illustrator. So first things first, we'll create a square. So to do that, I need to go over to my left hand tool panel and grab the rectangle tool. If I click and hold on the rectangle over here, you can see we get a bunch of other options for shapes, but in this case, we just want to choose the rectangle tool. So to start using this, all I need to do is on my artboard, just click and drag. And you can see by clicking and dragging, we can create a rectangle of any size. If I hold shift this will lock the aspect ratio to be a perfect square so that's what we want in this case so I'm just going to drag out this square I'm actually just going to flip the fill to a stroke color and we'll make this an orange color and we'll bump up the stroke weight as well moving on we have a square with rounded corners so what I can do is grab my rectangle tool again and we're going to do something slightly different here I'm going to go to the middle of this square and I'm going to click and as you can see we have the same option here to click and drag out a rectangle or square of our choosing but if I hold option on a Mac or alt on a PC we can actually scale this out from where we clicked so it's scaling out from the middle of our object again holding shift will lock this to a perfect square and I'll size this the way I want it to now we do actually have a rounded rectangle tool within our tool options here if I click and hold you can see this is our second option but with the new versions of Illustrator we get these small circles sitting inside each corner so if I grab my direct selection tool these are corner widgets so we can actually click and drag these and round corners using them it's an easier way of creating a rectangle or square with rounded corners and this can apply to any object with sharp corners so it doesn't just have to be a rectangle or square moving on we have a circle so to create a circle we need to select our ellipse tool as so that can be found it's the third option down here within our tools so with this selected this is working in the exact same way as the rectangle tool I can just click and drag and you can see this is going to create ellipse or oval shapes if I don't hold shift if I do hold shift that will lock it to a perfect circle and if I hold shift and option or shift and alt on a PC that will lock it to scale out from the middle so moving on we now have a hexagon so to to create a hexagon or a, a shape with more than four sides we need to use the polygon tool so that can be found here and this works ever so slightly differently I can still click and drag and you can see we get our hexagon shape here however if I want to create a shape with a different number of sides I can actually use the up and down arrows on my keyboard so by pressing the up arrow you can see I can add more sides pressing the down arrow I can reduce the number of sides I can keep going until we actually get a triangle which is what we'll be creating next so we'll go back to a hexagon here and if I hold shift again that's going to keep this locked on a horizontal plane so in this case I'm going to create this hexagon then I'm going to grab my selection tool and we'll just rotate this if I hold shift while rotating that's going to snap this to 45 degree angles so we can flip this round to be the same orientation and then again holding shift and option here on my Mac I can scale this up from the middle to match the size of our template and the same thing goes here if I select any of these corner points I get our corner widget and we can actually round off these corners as well now we just showed you how to do this but I can grab the polygon tool again and another way of creating any of these shapes, so this applies to any of these shape tools, if I just simply click once, we get a dialog box that we can actually set the size of the shape from here. So you can see we have a radius setting and the number of sides. So in this case, I want to create a three-sided shape, so a triangle. I can set the radius, but in this case, I'm just going to click OK. I'll just move this down with my selection tool holding shift to scale this up. Lastly, we have the star tool. So again, going into my shape tools here, it's down at the bottom. 
select the star tool. This tool works slightly differently from the others. If I click and drag, you can see we get a star here. Now, if I hold command on my keyboard or control on a PC, you can see I can just alter the outer points of the star. So I can make this more extruded and extreme looking, or I can bring this back in and reduce the effect of the star. If I hold shift, again, that's going to lock this to be sitting perfectly on a horizontal plane here. Holding command still, I can adjust the outer point still. If I just hold shift, that's just going to scale it as a whole. And if I hold shift and option, that's going to lock this to be a perfect star. So similar to the one that we see on our template file. So that's what I'm going to choose in this case. Just reposition this. So there you have it, that's the basic shape tools. Now we're going to use them to create some slightly more complex designs. So just moving down and we're going to use a combination of the shape tools and the shape builder tool. So this is what we can use to actually merge shapes together. And this is a good example of how useful and important shapes are when designing an illustrator. So the first example we have here is a cloud. So I'm just going to select my ellipse tool and this is nice and easy to create. I'm just going to hold shift and option and we're, we're just going to create some roughly sized circles here. I'm going to do them all along the same plane and for each of them again I'm just going to hold shift and option to scale out from the middle. This doesn't have to be perfect against the template but this is just a rough example. What I can also do is just click on one of the previously created circles and holding option or alt on a PC, I can click and drag and create a copy. Scale this up. So I'll just keep going along this plane, resizing them. And this is going to look quite messy to begin with, but we will tidy this up. Okay, so we'll go with something like that. Now, lastly, I'm just going to grab my rectangle tool and I'm just going to draw a rectangle underneath here to the bottom line of our template here. So we've got a series of circles and a rectangle, so nothing complex at all. If I select all of this and then grab my shape builder tool, which is over on the left hand side, the shortcut for this is shift and M on your keyboard. Now you can see if I hover over any of these parts, we get the option to create shapes from any of the overlapping paths here. So what I want to do is merge all of the circles above the top of the rectangle. So to do that, all I need to do is click and drag. That's going to merge all of these areas. And then to get rid of everything below, I'm just holding Option or Alt on a PC and clicking and dragging across there. And there you have it, there's a basic cloud shape. And again here, I can use my direct selection tool. I'm going to select the two bottom corner points here. And using the corner widget, I can just pull these in slightly and round off the corners there. And it's just gonna give it a slightly softer look. Moving on, we have a location pin here, and this is very easy to create as well. So what I'm actually going to do is grab my rectangle tool first. I'm going to drag out a perfect square to begin with. Now I want to grab my ellipse tool, and from the middle, so wait until your smart guides snap to the center. If you don't have smart guides on, these are very helpful for aligning everything within your artboard. To turn them on, you can go up to view and scroll down and look for where it says smart guides and make sure this is ticked. So the shortcut is command and U. If you have them enabled and you press command U, that will turn them off. You can always turn them back on. So from the middle here, again, holding shift and option, I can drag out a circle. Now what I want to do is with my direct selection tool, I'm going to grab three of the points of the square, so the top two and the bottom left points, and with the corner widget, I'm just gonna drag this in. Now I can select all of this, and with my selection tool, 
just holding shift this is going to rotate it 45 degrees and we now have a simple location marker moving on we have a simple box icon here so to do this you may already know we're going to use the polygon tool from the middle and you can see this will remember the number of sides that we used last time around so in that case it was three sides for a triangle so i'm just going to use the up arrows on my keyboard to make this a, a hexagon here so a six-sided shape and again i'll just create this and then rotate it 90 degrees and then we'll scale it up Now in this case, I'm going to use another tool. It's not technically a shape tool. We're just going to use the line segment tool. So that again can be located on the left hand side. I'm just going to use my smart guides to snap to the anchor points made by the hexagon and just drag these lines to the center. I'm going to do this all the way around. And there you can see we can create a simple box very easily. Last but not least, we'll do something slightly more complex here. So again, to begin with, I'm going to drag out some circles here with the ellipse tool from the center. We're just gonna drag these out, very simple. We have our inner and our outer circle. Now these kind of indents all the way around, we need to be able to plot them accurately. So to do that, I'm actually going to use the polygon tool again. And this is where shapes can come in handy as well. We can actually use them to plot other points within our design. So in this case, again, I'm just holding shift and option here to scale this out. I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees and then scale this up to be the same size as the outer circle. And now going back to my ellipse tool, I have the ability to use my smart guides here and plot out some smaller circles where each point of the polygon intersects with the outer circle and this just means it's going to be consistent. What I'm actually going to do in this case is copy the first circle that we've made here. So holding option again or alt on the PC we can just click and drag. You may need to zoom in for this just to see that it is definitely snapping to the right point here. Again just option clicking make sure you see that intersect text from your smart guide. Now we just need to create the intersecting lines here. So again, using the line segment tool, I'm just going to actually drag from the center. And in this case, I'm actually just going to hold option. So again, this is going to scale our line out from where we clicked. And then I'm gonna take this to the points within the polygon as well. So again, holding alt, drag this out to one of the polygon points and that's just creating a nice perfect line through the center of the circle. Okay so this is looking a bit busy. We can remove our polygon now. We were just using this as a guide to plot our circles and lines here. I'm going to select all of this and grab our shape builder tool and holding alt I'm just going to remove these middle sections, still holding alt, we're just going to remove the circle areas on the outside now. And that's going to create some perfect indents here. So you can quickly see how we can start using basic shapes to create some slightly more complex looking designs. So there you have it, a very simple and quick explanation of the shape tools in Adobe Illustrator. If you have any questions at all, do let us know down below. Remember to like the video and subscribe for more content. And if you'd like to know more about our full graphic design course, visit graphicdesignerpro.com. See you next time.